today's video, I'm going to be giving you the easiest framework to get into ketosis fast. If you follow these three steps, it is almost guaranteed that you're gonna be in ketosis in 12 hours. So if you're wanting to kickstart a keto journey or maybe you've had a high carb day and you're ready to get back on track, keep watching. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Kate. I'm a certified health and nutrition coach. I post videos twice a week here on YouTube talking all things insulin resistance, weight loss, sleep, and more. So if you're ready to take control of your metabolic health, make sure to click that subscribe button. And you can also find me on TikTok and Instagram where I share new posts every single day. Now, I am very passionate about the keto diet. Not only have I seen huge improvements to my own health, but also the health of hundreds of my clients through my online coaching program, Keto Start. Some of the benefits of the keto diet include weight loss, stabilized blood sugar, increased energy, decreased inflammation, and improved mental clarity. I've also worked with many people who have reversed insulin resistance and even type two diabetes. Keto can be powerful, but getting started and getting into ketosis can feel overwhelming. You're changing your metabolism after all and training it to burn fat for energy efficiently. A skill that a lot of us lost because our modern diets are so centered around carbohydrates. But anyways, no matter if you're starting keto for the first time or you're trying to get back on track, if you follow these three steps, you're gonna be back on the path to success in no time. Step number one is do 20 minutes of sprints. Now, if sprints are not an option for you, I do have a backup option, which I will get to in just a second. So hang with me. Now for this step to make sense, I need to explain how our bodies use energy. Explaining it in the simplest way, our bodies have two sources of energy. They can use carbohydrates and sugar, or they can use fat. Carbohydrates are a quick energy source. The body breaks them down quickly and they enter our bloodstream as glucose. This causes our blood sugar to rise and our cells can use this energy right away. Our bodies can also store about 2000 calories worth of glucose as glycogen in our liver and our muscles. The other energy source we have is fat. Fat takes longer for our bodies to break down so it can't be used for energy as quickly. And this is both dietary fat and stored body fat. Now, the good thing about using fat for energy though is that even the leanest individual has over 200,000 worth of calories of energy stored as fat. So once we do tap into our stored body fat, we have massive amounts of it to use. But there is a catch. Our bodies will favor burning glucose when it's available. Because think about it, if we have the glucose ready to go in our bloodstream, why would our body bother tapping into our stored fat for energy? Now, ideally humans should be metabolically flexible. They should be able to switch between using carbohydrates and fat for energy relatively seamlessly. We should be able to use carbs for energy when it's available. And if we go several hours without eating, we should be able to tap into fat. But unfortunately, our modern diets have made us so reliant on glucose for energy. Because we are constantly eating carbohydrates throughout the day, because we are constantly snacking on granola bars, crackers, and fruit in between meals, we've become dependent on carbs and our bodies have difficulty accessing fat to use for energy. Now, if you remember, I just mentioned that our bodies can store about 2000 calories worth of energy from carbohydrates. And we need to deplete these stores before our bodies can start burning any meaningful amount of fat, AKA get into ketosis. Anyways, that was a long-winded way of saying that to kickstart getting into ketosis, we need to deplete our glycogen. And the fastest way to do this is by performing maximal effort exercise. What we want to do is perform five to 10 sprints for 20 to 30 seconds with a one to two minute rest in between. The harder you can work, the faster you're gonna burn through your glycogen stores. And this should only take about 20 to 25 minutes. Just make sure you do a proper warm up before and a proper cool down. Now, if you have any physical limitations that are preventing you from doing sprints, 
Again, you can do these sprints on a treadmill, you can do them on a rowing machine or on a stationary bike. But if that isn't an option for you, you can do low intensity cardio instead. This can look like taking a walk or hopping on a stationary bike and doing this at a leisurely pace for 30 to 60 minutes. Now, if you can't do any type of exercise at all, that's still okay. You can skip this step entirely and just do number two and three. It just might take a little bit longer. Step number two, load up on fat. Now, a little bit after you've done your sprints or your low intensity cardio, you're gonna want to have a high fat meal. This meal is gonna be high in fat, have moderate protein, and have very few, if any, carbohydrates. From a macro standpoint, you'll want this meal to be about 80% fat and 20% protein, and again, only trace amounts of carbs. So choose a fatty cut of meat, like a ribeye steak, or a fatty fish like salmon. Cook it in lots of fat, such as ghee or tallow, or one of the best options for getting into ketosis, which I'm gonna talk more about in a minute, is coconut oil. Maybe add some egg yolks, you can scramble those. Top your fish with some butter or olive oil. Avocado can also be a good addition, or a few olives. But really, the emphasis of this meal is on fat. Now, I highlighted coconut oil, and there's a reason for that. Coconut oil is very high in a type of fat called medium chain triglycerides, also known as MCTs. This type of fat is processed differently by the body than other types of fat. It goes straight to our liver and can be turned to ketones quickly. And this is why it's so great. It can help you get into ketosis faster. Other coconut and dairy products do contain MCTs as well, but coconut oil has the highest concentration, with the exception of MCT oil, which is 100% MCTs. MCT oil is just a more potent source of MCTs, and it's usually made from coconut oil. So even just taking a teaspoon of MCT oil with your meal, that's gonna help to kickstart ketosis. Now I have a whole video on MCT oil and the other benefits that come along with it, which I'm gonna link above and you can check out afterwards. Now before I get into the third and final step, I really want to emphasize one thing that is so important when you're in ketosis. This one factor can be the difference between you feeling absolutely amazing when you get into ketosis and you feeling less than amazing. Let's just put it that way. What I'm talking about is electrolytes. Electrolytes are electrically charged minerals that play key roles in muscle contractions, immune function, and our heartbeat. When we don't get enough electrolytes, we can experience muscle cramps, we can experience fatigue, and other side effects. An obvious example of this is when people drink pickle juice to relieve muscle cramps. Pickle juice is high in the electrolyte sodium, and low sodium causes muscle cramps. Now, when we're in ketosis, our bodies are excreting more electrolytes, so it is extra important to replenish. If you don't replenish, this is when people start to experience what is known as the keto flu. A lot of times the keto flu comes down to an electrolyte imbalance, and the symptoms of it can be avoided entirely if you just supplement them. Now, when I say electrolytes, I am mainly referring to sodium, potassium, and magnesium. Now, I really like Sodi's Everyday Hydration Salts because they contain a perfect balance of the three, they have no artificial ingredients, and they taste pretty great. They are a way better source of electrolytes than Gatorade is, plus they don't come with any added sugar. Sugar, of course, will kick you out of ketosis. You can either buy the individual packets, which come in a box, which can be used as a dispenser, or you can buy the tub. <laughs> And Sodi is made in Australia, but they do ship worldwide. If you wanna check them out, I'm gonna put the link in the description box down below, and you can use code Kate15 to save 15% off your order. So whether this is your first time getting into ketosis, or you've been in ketosis before, but you did experience some of the side effects of the keto flu, replenish electrolytes. <laughs> you can thank me later. But now let's get into the final step. Step number three, fast for 12 hours. So with the exercise from step one, you should have gotten a good start on depleting your glycogen. Then with step two, you load it up on fat and maybe even some MCTs. Now it's time to completely deplete your glycogen 
and get into fat burning mode. And we're gonna do this by fasting, AKA not eating. Now, when I say fast for 12 hours, this can be overnight. Anytime you're spent sleeping does count towards this fasting time. So don't eat anything, but remember to stay hydrated, drink plenty of water and supplement electrolytes. You can also have some unsweetened tea or some other no calorie, no sugar beverages. Go to sleep and then when you wake up in the morning, you should be in ketosis. Now nutritional ketosis begins at 0.5 millimoles per liter. So if you have a blood ketone meter, that's the number you're gonna be trying to hit. I also have a breath ketone meter from the company Biosense. Usually I don't recommend measuring breath ketones. The vast majority of products on the market, they're just not accurate. Biosense is the only one that is FDA registered and medical grade though, and it's been shown to highly correlate with blood ketone levels. They measure their ketones in a slightly different metric known as ACEs. So the number you want to be aiming for is five ACEs. And the ketone strips you pee on, yeah, those can be okay, but only when you're first starting keto. Once you become fat adapted, they aren't accurate anymore. So I don't really recommend using them at all. Now you might think that shooting for higher ketones is better, but that's not always the case. For most people's goals, sticking between 0.5 millimoles per liter and 2.5 millimoles per liter, or five and 25 ACEs if you're using Biosense. This is the place where you're going to maximize fat burning, have good mental clarity, and have stable energy. Any higher and you're going to get into therapeutic ketosis, which does come with additional neurological and healing benefits. But this level of ketosis is difficult to maintain, unless you continue eating very, very high fat or you're doing a lot of fasting. It can be done, but for most people and their goals, you don't need to be that deep into ketosis. Anyways guys, those are the three steps to get into ketosis fast. Let me know down below if you have tried these steps before and if you have any other additional tips. Also in the description box, I'm going to put the link to check out Sodi's Everyday Hydration Salts, which I highly, highly recommend because electrolytes can make or break your keto experience. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, you might also enjoy my video on MCT oil, which I will put right here. If you wanna catch up on my most recent upload, you can find it here. And if you wanna check out my coaching programs, including my Keto Star program, which I mentioned at the start of this video, you can find that here. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.